Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Selamat pagi and good morning to everyone who are listening to my talk today. The title of my presentation is Earthquake. Is Malaysia at risk? Yes, this is the most common question I received during my career as a lecturer, researcher, and consultant in earthquake engineering field. I have divided my presentation into several topics. I will start with the introduction, followed by events of earthquake felt in Malaysia, seismic hazard assessment. I will then emphasize on the seismic risk aspect in construction industries in Malaysia, such as the buildings, bridges, dams, and tunnels. Finally, I will wrap up my talk with a summary. The map shows the distribution of earthquake events for the last 100 years for earthquake greater than magnitude 5. Focusing on the Southeast Asia, Malaysia is located. We can see that the most earthquakes occurred in the Indonesian region, Sumatra, Java, Sulawesi, and it continues up to the Philippine Islands. It looks like Malaysia is free from any earthquake events. Is that true? It seems that we are out of the earthquake trap. This is a map showing the Pacific Ring of Fire. The pink color coded area highlights the region. This is an official map published by the Britannica Encyclopedia in the year 2011. The map also shows the plate boundaries where the earthquake mostly occurred and volcanic arch. It is interesting to see that the ring of fire also covers Malaysia. That's why we have experienced some earthquakes in peninsular Malaysia at Bukit Tinggi Pahang in the year 2007 and in Sabah, Ranau, 2015. The earthquake may not be that big or frequent now, but the worst can come and it can happen in the future. That's why the study of seismic hazard and risk is important to Malaysia. To add to the evidence that we are indeed exposed to the earthquake threat and we are in the ring of fire, I was shown by a, a document by my supervisor while I was in uh, doing, while I was doing my sabbatical at Boston College in the year 2016. Professor Abel, a prominent professor in seismology, showed me a document on stable continent published in, uh, by Electric Power Research Institute of US in the year 1994. The document clearly shows that Malaysia is in the active intraplate region as shown by the steeple or dotted area. Thus, we are not in a stable continent like Australia or Africa, and we are in the active seismic regions where earthquakes are actually a threat. When, I, uh, when earthquake of magnitude 9 happened in Aceh in the year 2004, we were shocked by the strong tremors felt by people in the cities at the west coast of peninsular Malaysia, especially in Penang. Then a few hours later, Tsunami wave reached our coastline near Kuala Kedah, Langkawi, and Penang. About 68 people were killed and hundreds of houses collapsed and badly damaged as shown by the red marks on the map. In Aceh, 80% of the land was flooded and most of houses were washed away, leaving hundreds of thousands of people dead. The slide shows some examples of earthquake events that caused high fatality and huge damage to the infrastructures causing millions of dollars. For example, during Kobe earthquake in 1995, 5,000 people died, not so many compared to Aceh, where about a quarter of a million people killed. But the economic loss was so huge, the loss was about 100 billion pounds, which is equivalent to about 600 billion ringgit Malaysia. We may ask why a quake caused so much loss of lives and properties. It is because a quake not only vibrate and shake the ground, but also it causes the ground to rupture and cracks, causing other effects such as landslide, settlement, and liquefaction. 
It also produces secondary effects such as tsunami and fire due to leakage of gas pipelines and electrical short circuits. I try to show in the form of infographics on how earthquake can affect our buildings, bridges, or any structures we build on the ground, and how earthquake create hazard and cause structural vulnerability to our country. Let's first look at the earthquake that had happened around us. Even though these are historical events, earthquake can happen again at the same location after several years, depending on the fault lines. These earthquake events are marked in red and yellow, and we consider that as the exposure. When earthquake occur at the fault lines, it provides seismic wave throughout the earth bedrock, and the bedrock vibrates can, and can be detected by accelerograph. And the ground acceleration can be also calculated using equation that predict the ground vibration from earthquake magnitude at a certain distance. These values can be plotted in contours as shown here in various color. The colors indicate the ground motion in acceleration. As the waves continue to move up through the soil, the vibration will be amplified and further the effect the structures uh, on top of the surface. This is what we call the fragility, fragility effect. As a whole, from these infographics, we can have equations that demonstrate hazard as exposure plus ground motion and vulnerability, which is inventory plus the fragility. Finally, we can have a big equation of risk, which is hazard multiplied by the vulnerabilities. As we know, seismic hazard is the level of ground motion due to seismic activity, and seismic vulnerability is the amount of damage experienced by a specific structure. After the Aceh earthquake in the year 2004, the next big earthquake occurred in Sumatra, Padang, but this catastrophic that we had before can cause the economic losses, structural damage, and national, and can hamper the national economic growth. Earthquake fell. While Aceh earthquake produced tsunami to Malaysia coastline, Padang earthquake created big tremors to many big cities in the western part of Peninsula Malaysia, especially in Kuala Lumpur city center. The top two pictures show buildings in Padang that collapse. Almost 80% building in, sub in Padang collapse or badly damaged. The bottom two pictures show occupants of high-rise building in Kuala Lumpur had to be evacuated due to the strong tremors. Traffic in the city center were chaotic due to the panics experienced by the drivers. In the Star newspaper, in the year 2012, a few years after the Padang earthquake, the Minister of Housing and Local Government at that time, Datuk Sri Cho Chi Hyung, highlighted on the need to reinforce buildings to ensure they can withstand tremors and possible earthquakes. Thus, the building by law should be strengthened. A year before, in New Straits Time 2011, Tun Abdullah Ahmad Badawi, the former Prime Minister, recommended on the use of high damping rubber bearing designed by the Malaysia Rubber Board that can help protect the second pin and bridge from structural damage caused by earthquake. In the year 2015, Malaysia was shocked by the magnitude 5.9 earthquake that struck Ranau in Sabah. The information was provided in detail by the USGS website and also our own meteorological department website. The measurement indicates values of 6 in the MMI and PGA of 12% of G, which are moderate in terms of ground shaking and should show at least uh, light damage on our building, according to the table. Some of the damages recorded during our site visit just a day after the earthquake events are listed in the strike, such as IPD Ranau, staff quarters, suffer structural cracks, our Rahman, most domes were tilted and the whole mosque had to be demolished as MK Ranao showed structure cracks and a few buildings in Dream World Resort at Mount Kinabalu 
Mount Kinabalu partially collapsed. So these damages provide evidence about the significance of earthquake hazard and risk to our country. Therefore, it is very important to do the seismic hazard assessment for the whole country. By doing this, we will understand more of the earthquake hazard, vulnerability, and finally, the risk to our country measure. Firstly, we need to know, we need to know the exposure of our country to the active faults that exist locally, other than the global ones, and also identify the previous earthquake that had happened in our country as far as more than 100 years ago. The slide shows the fault lines in Peninsula Malaysia, Sabah, and Sarawak. But the challenge is to identify which ones are active among all these fault lines and which ones are not active. So we need the geologists and seismologists to assist us in the process. We managed to gather our local expert in Malaysia to work together in coming up with seismic hazard map. This is a photo taken after the final meeting session in establishing the seismic map for the Malaysian standard. You can see representative from the government agencies such as JMG, JKR, CIDB and Met Malaysia from the universities. We have UMS and UTM and also from the private sector, SM, IM, Sabah and Shahida, just to name a few. We have successfully, successfully published the Malaysian standard on seismic design. On the left side is the main document, MSEN 1998, 2015. And on the right side is the supplement document, National Annex 2017, which is very important document that include our first ever official seismic hazard map of Malaysia. It is a contour map of the ground acceleration in terms of gravity to indicate the level of ground shaking. Seismic map of Peninsula Malaysia shows the maximum values of 9.5% G in Bukit Tinggi Pahang area, which indicates that the building should be designed for a quick with special steel reinforcement detailing. Other hotspot, uh, you can see Kuala Pilah, Manjung, Kenyer, and Temenggo. Seismic map of Sabah shows maximum PGA values of 16.5% G in Ranau, Kudat, and Lahad Datu area, which indicate that the building requires further strict requirement. By looking at the values of overall contour lines, you can say that Sabah is the highest seismic region in Malaysia. Local geologists predict that the next big earthquake in Sabah will occur in Lahad Datu. So extra precaution should be taken in terms of design and disaster management. Sarawak shows a maximum values of 9% G, particularly in the town of Nia and the surrounding area. The other hotspot is in the southern part of Bintulu near Bakun Dam. All those three maps of Peninsula Sabah and Sarawak are included in the National Annex document. Seismic risk. I've come to the final topic of my talk. In order to know the earthquake risk to Malaysia, we need to identify whether our inventory, structures and infrastructure can withstand this earthquake hazard. A few buildings from several states in Malaysia have been chosen. The study was a collaborative work among three agencies, JKR, Ikram Malaysia and UTM in the year 2003 and 2005. The slide shows some pictures of government office building, hospitals in Peninsula Malaysia. Similarly, some government buildings, schools and hospitals in Sabah have been selected. And in Sarawak, we have about 10 buildings uh, in various cities such as Kuching, Niri, Limbang and Bintulu. The study started with the visual inspection and then a detailed structure analysis was conducted was conducted to check the capacity of the building. The distribution of the building types in terms of height for low rise, medium rise and high rise buildings are shown. More samples of low rise buildings were taken because low rise buildings are more susceptible to earthquake load other than the other building because of the frequency resonance. 
This table, which is the results of the study, show the intensity level of a quick from very low to very high. The levels can be divided into zone zero to zone four. And we can relate the zone with the ground acceleration and also with the magnitude. From the study, it was found that buildings in Sabah are expected to have slight damage as proven during the run out of quick 2015. In most states, uh, light cracks are predicted to occur in the buildings. The good news is that none of the buildings will collapse. However, the building can have higher damage or even collapse. If it is poorly designed and constructed with low material quality. Infrastructures such as bridges, dams and tunnels were also covered by the study. The study was funded by MOSTI and managed by ASN. About 13 bridges had been selected from almost every state in Malaysia. And we have also studied eight numbers of dams and two tunnels. The result shows that the highest zone we have for Malaysia is for Sabah and it is in the zone 2B for moderately high level and we expect to have local damage for the bridges and dams at this level and only slight damage to the tunnels. For critical structure like dams, we normally do not want to see even a local damage. Thus, precaution must be taken to strengthen existing dams and proper seismic design should be done to new dams. This is the risk matrix. From the hazard and vulnerability study, we can then combine those two parameters to obtain the risk, which will answer whether Malaysia is at risk under the earthquake threats. I have simplified the zone into three levels and the vulnerability in three damage level. The blue cell are low risk, the orange is the medium, and the red is the high risk. As predicted, Sabah is in the moderately high risk category, and most of the states in Malaysia are under the medium risk category, as indicated in the table. We have come to the end of the talk, which is the summary where Malaysia uh, is not actually in a stable continent. We are in an unstable continent and we are in the active intraplate region. In terms of hazard, we are exposed to very active faults in Indonesia and Philippines. And we are in a moderate intensity of ground motion. The highest is about 16.5% G. In terms of vulnerability, we expect to have low to moderate structure damage, especially to buildings. So to answer the question whether is Malaysia at risk, yes, Malaysia is at risk because from the parameters, and we found out that we are at the medium risk. Last but not least, our research group in UTM, the Engineering Seismology and Earthquake Engineering Research has developed many patented products related to earthquake reduction and mitigation. Most of them have won prestigious awards. For example, the sear eye block. The cement blocks consist of water that act like dampers for the building. It has won innovative product of the year during the British Invention Show 2013 in London. With that, uh, I'd like to thank you for listening to my talk. Best regards to everyone. Stay healthy and stay safe. Assalamualaikum.